Hi, John here. We're just going to have a look today at refrigeration and how it works. So what I'll do is go down to the 3D refrigeration model and you can see on the left here there's a household fridge. I'll load up that model and we'll check out just how the fridge normally looks and then we can look at some of the main components and then we'll go through the process. So the model has pretty much loaded up now. I'm just going to open the doors using the button here on the bottom right. And as you can see there's some 3D Knowledge Wonder Juice bottles in the fridge and not a lot else. If we go around the back you can see how it looks in the back of the fridge. And there's some components there, it looks like a big heat exchanger on the back etc. So that's how the fridge looks in your normal home, might be slightly different. And what I'll do is I'll back out now and I'll go to the main components explain model. Now what we try to do with this model is explode it so that you can see the various components of the system. So I'll explode it now and you can see we've colored some red, some green and some blue. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go through each of the components now and explain to you a little bit about how they work. This green item here is actually a compressor, so it's going to be boosting the pressure of whatever it compresses. In this case, it's taking in a gas. The next item in red is a condenser. It's essentially just a heat exchanger. And the blue item here is a capillary tube or a expansion device. Some people also call these thermostatic expansion valves. This isn't a valve, but it's an expansion device. I'll tell you how that works in a moment. And then a blue item here, which is actually just another heat exchanger, but this time they call it an evaporator. And you can see how that all slides into the fridge. If you want, when you actually go to the website, you can use the bottom right hand button here, assemble, all flies back together or explode and it will all come back out again. So let's go to the compressor first. I think that's the most logical place to start. The compressor is drawing in a gas called isobutane. This is a type of refrigerant. It's going to draw that in on the low pressure side. So it's at a low pressure, a low temperature. It draws that gas in. It compresses it into a hot vapor. Right, whenever you compress a gas, the temperature will increase. This is one of the gas laws. So whenever you compress a gas, the temperature increases. So what we've done is just compress the gas. We've got a hot vapor out and that's the exact opposite of what we wanted to achieve. Remember, we're actually trying to cool something down here. That's what refrigeration's all about. So we don't really want to use this hot vapor. So what we're going to do is send it to a heat exchanger, what they call a condenser. Now the condenser will cool the gas down. It does this by passing it through tubes and these tubes radiate the heat to ambient air. So the air will get warmer and the refrigerant inside the tubes will become cooler. Now at this stage we have a high pressure liquid and this high pressure liquid is then discharged to a capillary or an expansion device. Now the expansion device essentially causes a massive reduction in pressure and because of this massive reduction in pressure we also get a massive reduction in temperature. So remember if you compress a gas it heats up and if it expands it cools down. So that's exactly what we're going to do here. We're going to expand the gas. So we're going to cause a massive pressure drop. This causes a massive temperature drop and it's going to be around say minus 20 degrees, minus 15 degrees. So now we have a vapor or vapor gas refrigerant at a very low temperature. So all we need to do now is pump that around. Remember the compressor is still running. So it's pumping the gas around the evaporator, this blue item here and it circulates around the fridge and obviously because it's very cold and the fridge is not as cold as the vapor or as the gas the fridge will get cooler and the gas will get warmer whenever you have two items that are next to each other at different temperatures they always want to reach an equilibrium so they'll always tend to go towards the same temperature they'll try and meet in the middle and that's exactly what's happening here and once that's been done, once we've cooled our fridge down a little bit, we can then take the low pressure gas back to the compressor. So remember it's low pressure, low temperature again, the compressor will again compress it. And because it's compressing it, the temperature will increase and the whole process starts again. 
I suppose what I should also mention here is that between the evaporator and the condenser there'll actually be a layer of insulation because obviously you don't want the heat being radiated into the fridge and also the entire fridge will be insulated because once it's cold you want it to stay cold it takes quite a lot of energy it takes quite a lot of effort for the compressor to compress the gas so in order to avoid having a very high electricity bill you want a very well insulated fridge so it's energy efficient and obviously it also helps if you keep the fridge door shut which is actually a problem in my family and that's essentially how it works there's only four main components there it's not the most complicated system you're ever likely to encounter there are a lot of variations some systems use ammonia some systems use r404a some systems use r134a refrigerant but the concept generally is the same anyway i hope you found that informative and interesting if you get a chance go to the website load up the introduction that's here on the left hand side click on that load up the introduction have a read through it check out the video again and then if you want you can also have a look at the 3d models and by the time you've done all that you should really have a very firm understanding of how the whole process works if you want to help us out please do like or share the page on facebook or twitter and if you really want to support us please check out our patreon page thank you very much for your time